it's vital that we have a table as, as regional partners to come together because we don't operate as islands. And as it relates to the novel coronavirus or COVID-19, this is extremely helpful because what it means is a consistent and coordinated message for the residents of the Central Region. So over the weekend, Julie, you may remember, state health leaders warned the public about these local possible coronavirus cases. Both patients I've learned recently traveled to Asia and arrived back home with symptoms. It has become clear to everyone that states all over the country need to take a greater leadership role in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. Today, we're taking four actions. First, I am declaring a state of emergency in our Commonwealth. The number of coronavirus cases here in Virginia has increased by more than 200 in just the past 24 hours. In light of the imminent potential threat to the public health and public safety, I am declaring a local state of emergency in the city of Richmond effective immediately. There's some coverage over the weekend about uh, inmate disease across the state. Um, and our health department has been in close contact with Sheriff Irving and the Richmond City Justice Center over the last few months. Uh, she has adhered to some really strict quarantining protocols, and we have not had any outbreaks in the jail uh, to date. Uh, she engaged in testing today, uh, which uh, sort of widespread testing for the first time, um, and really gave the opportunity for any staff or inmates to get tested. And so, really good news. Uh, you know, so far there was. Uh, you know, the good news is that we have not had any significant outbreaks, um, and I applaud Sheriff Irving's efforts to be proactive and to start, uh, you know, trying to identify if there's any other disease going on there right now. Yesterday we did our COVID-19 testing of 215 people here at the Richmond City Sheriff's Office. We should have our results back soon, hopefully everything is well. We decided to do our testing simply because now we're in phase three here in the city of Richmond. We have a lot of protests going on. We have a lot of people moving around. It's vacation time. So we want to make sure that we continue to be safe and that we're doing the best we can for the wellness of the inmates and the staff that are here at the Richmond City Sheriff's Office. So what I have seen inside of this jail as far as the outlook of what people and the information is being placed out of the public it's maybe a different outlook from other individuals. As I know in the Western world, those, we really don't have too much information as far as COVID anyways. Upon request, you can receive whatever you need to get as far as if you need bleach for yourself to clean yourself, you need your cell cleaned up. And as I'm doing my security checks in the morning, I take bleach with me, I take Tylex with me, I take gloves, any clean supplies that they request, I give it to them. You know, at first we came with a big thing. We were given wipes that we were using all the time. They're pretty good on opening the supply closet for us. I've been able to clean my room as often as possible. Red, yellow, and green is how we clean. Red means the area needs to be clean. Yellow, the area is clean and is on standby. Green means the area is good and ready to go. We use this cleaning method on the secure and unsecure side of the facility. I can't, I can't really say that they denied us access to it, so that's been pretty good. When we need it, we are able to get it. A lot of individuals have a major misconsumption as far as what's being done in the jail. Uh, Sandy Coleman, she comes on and she issues out uh, cleaning stuff uh, for us to wipe down. Sandy Jones, she comes on. She does a very good job as far as cleaning. I support them wiping the phones before they use them, the tablets, the showers. I want them to clean all day throughout the day. She hands out a lot of stuff, bleach, uh, sanitizers for us to wipe the bars down, our doors. And at night when we lock down, uh, the guys do a real good job wiping the chairs down and wiping the seats down and wiping the bars and the doors down while we are locked down at night. My name is Dixie DeLutis. I'm the medical administrator for Richmond City Justice Center working for Medico. We constantly encourage the residents to wear masks when we see them without them and we also notice that some of the residents here try to encourage each other to do the same thing. They don't, you, they, they won't even let you out of the car without a mask on. Mr. Morgan, come out. Make sure you have your mask on. If you try to get through those two little doors there, when you go through those doors, that's how tough they're watching. The camera up there. When you go through that door, when you come in the power button, they'll be like, where your mask at? You like, go back and get your mask. You, they won't even let you out the hallway without the mask. 
and it's very important that if anyone comes off of the pod or the unit, they have to have their mask on. We've been issued masks here at the Richmond City Justice Center. As you can see, the masks that I'm wearing, it's up to the individuals and the inmates to wear these masks and to protect themselves. We've been given guidelines and protocol as far as what to do. They just came through last week and came to issue everybody brand new masks if you need them. So we have a long, we have a wash of laundry detergent what we get when we wash our laundry, wash our masks with, keep it sanitized and clean. I feel like, you know, the masks is okay, but I mean, you have to have mm -hmm. everybody following the instructions with the mask. You know, you just can't have one person wearing their mask and then the other person don't have their mask on. When they were first made um, aware that they were positive, it was either myself as the administrator or the director of nursing went up there and um, assessed each person and told them that they were positive and answered any questions that they had. I found out that I was positive um, when they came and did the swab about up my nose. Um, and about two or three days later, that's when they came and it was like they were positive. Once we've identified that we did have positive residents in the building, we decided to prevent the movement. Instead of having the residents come down to medical, we actually transformed our entire care delivery system and we actually had the provider as well as the nurses go up to the pods to eliminate the movement, which would cause cross-contamination between the inmates and the staff. Um, we're very proud to say that not one medical professional that works here has been positive, so we have been wearing the proper PPE to protect ourselves as well as the residents of the facility. We do keep the negative and the positive people separate. That's why we move them as soon as we find out that they are um, positive. We thought that our pod had an individual that may have been exposed to the COVID. We were instantly quarantined. So we're trying to um, pretty much um, motivate the guys to, 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 to be mindful, um, to wash your hands when you come out the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not do a lot of, this, you know, the young guys, they want to do a lot of shaking and, you know, you know just, Keep it moving, you know what I'm saying, I mean, uh, stay the distance. The Richmond Justice Center is reporting a spike in positive COVID-19 results. That's according to a news release sent late last night. The Richmond Sheriff's Office says in their statement they're reinforcing CDC guidelines to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and offering testing, but they say some inmates are refusing it. What I have seen for the reason for this outbreak of what's happening, us as inmates didn't really take it that serious. And we were issued masks as a toll protocol in order to keep ourselves from spreading this virus. And a lot of us had took that for granted. You know, because when we was in the park, you know, and she came in, um, she told us, you know, I want you guys to be safe. She said, I don't want anything to come you know, happen to you while you're in here. She said, while you're in here, you're under my watch. She said, and if you guys don't have the money to take the test, she said, take the test. I'll pay for it. You know, and I thought that was real sincere for her to say something like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because I'm an engineer myself. I was like, well, you know, I, I'm going to take it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she kind of encouraged me to take the test. When she made it, it's the way she expressed it. She was like, you know, it's, it was like general care that she actually cared about, you know, our welfare. You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't know what to take it out of that. Um, we, as you know, have COVID-19 patients in the building. We have done um, upwards of 1,000 tests and have had a total of 118 residents who have been positive. We've worked very hard prior to that to prevent any positives, but once it happened, um, we took quick action and went to each pod where the positive inmates were, and we educated them that they were positive, moved them to positive pods, and we explained to them the signs and symptoms to watch for, and we made sure they knew how to clean their areas. We gave them supplies. I myself initially was one of the initial groups that was quarantined. Um, 
once they are put on isolation, each individual has a different time frame as to when they can come off isolation based on their conditions and whether or not they have any symptoms or if they have any comorbidities, which are um, diagnoses that may impact how long they're um, symptomatic or how long they are um, ill with the, with the disease. I was on quarantine for 38 days. I was quarantined for, what, 14, 15 days. I don't know, it was just a challenge for me, especially being back in that room, because, you know, I don't like to be locked down. I have myself have worked a positive pod, and when I work a positive pod, I actually feel safe. I've been provided with all the necessary PPE to wear. Also, I'm briefed on any current situations dealing with those pods. I feel good working a positive pod, as long as you keep your gloves on, your gown on, and your mask on, you should be good, and as long as you keep washing your hands, so I feel good when I'm working on positive pod. The benefit of working a pod that I know is positive is that I actually know what I'm dealing with and I don't have to worry about the fear of the unknown. Granted that I am given all the proper PPE, it gives me the confidence to be able to do my job in an environment where I already know what I'm dealing with. When I went to court the morning of, you know, I had to pack my whole room up and to um, put it into the quarantine pod. When I came back, I had to do my 14 days. Not the best time, but you know I was able to come out once a day, do my showers. Um, they always had a clean car for us, so when we came out, we could disinfect anything that we wanted to. And when the 14 days were over, the nurse came, checked my temperature, checked my vitals, asked me about any symptoms, and I was cleared to come back. Once we have the person on isolation and they either reach their 10-day quarantine time or isolation time, um, we have the providers, it's not a nurse, it's actually the physician's assistant or the actual doctor go up to see them. They do an assessment of them, review again their medical history and decide if they can come off the isolation. So it's anywhere between 10 days to 20 days. And then the people that are on quarantine, either because they have been around someone who is either symptomatic with the illness or who um, is displaying signs and symptoms, they are off of quarantine for 14 days. And that can be removed by um, a nurse. It doesn't have to be a provider doing that. Um, we have continued to be in close contact with the sheriff and her team. Um, in the month of August, they were very aggressive about testing both inmates and staff, testing over 1,200 individuals during that time. Um, at this time, they have 91 positive inmates currently who are all cohorted separately uh, from the rest of the population. Um, they also have a category of individuals who uh, either were potentially exposed to some of those new positives or are showing symptoms. They have been cohorted in a separate uh, cell block, a, a separate pod, um, while we uh, await test results and then continue to monitor rigorously for symptoms there. And the sheriff, she's been doing an excellent job as far as keeping the COVID isolated. I'm in 6F and no one in there, they tested the whole part in there and no one has it in there. So we've been doing a real good job for it to clean the thing. I mean, if we ask for the supplies, the supplies is at hand. We get them. So I can't, I can't sit and say that we don't get supplies to clean. We do get them. So it's up to the individual that's in the part, that's in there, to go through the proper procedure to clean if you want to keep the, you know, the part set attack. We um, assess them daily. In fact, we go up four times a day to give medications if needed, and after that, we go up there and assess them to see if they have symptoms. We make sure they know what symptoms to alert us for. The nurses come around three times a day. Anytime anyone has felt like they've had symptoms, the nurse has been readily available to check them out and see what's really going on. They've been taking a caution. They've been wearing masks like they supposed to. Uh, coming in, they've been um, asking questions, asking people how we feel. Um, the medical staff, they have come around to give us our tests. I know we have them taken twice. Um, they do both nostrils. They uh, hand out papers to ask us, you know, if we have any other symptoms, and then we check. Because a lot of them listed. Just want to let you all know your test results. Everybody in here is negative. Alright, so we want to make sure we let you all know that. Um, you guys have been doing a really good job of doing what we've asked you to do. But as a result, she has to say, but we need to continue to do that. Continue to pull up on each other, let each other go ahead and put your mask on. Clean this, clean that, wash your hands.
Okay? Alright, any other questions while we're here? For my part, I feel safe in knowing that not many of us travel on and off the pod. So I guess it would be more of someone bringing it to the pod that would make me feel unsafe. I know when I do see people leave the pod, they take the precautions with the mask. Um, I see them washing their hands and you know just taking as much measures as possible. So I don't want it, but I feel like no one's bringing it either. So I'm pretty okay. It is sad to know that it's in the jail, but it was kind of inevitable since it's a pandemic thing. Or working with COVID, I feel like it's kind of scary sometimes because you don't know if you're going to take it to take it home to your family. You don't know if it's on your clothes when you go home. You don't know if you're tracking it through your house. And it just I try to take all the proper precautions I can when I'm at work to prevent it from taking it home. But the virus is widespread, so you don't know if you're bringing it to work or taking it home. For me, the mask is very important. I see that now, you know. Uh, must keep it on constant, 24-7, even in the pod, I wear my mask in the pod, you know, just, just to be on the safe side. You know, they did the quarantine and they did the best that they could to separate, you know, and they still do the best that they can with the quarantine. Um, I've really seen them step it up. I mean, they once they heard that it might be back again, they've even changed from the regular trays to the styrofoam trays just to stop the transfers as much. So I will say that I see the jail doing what they can to, you know, prevent anyone from getting it. That doesn't happen. So the thing is that's going on with individuals that they're misconceiving the message is that she has to do testing and the jail has to do testing. So Sheriff Irvin at this particular time has done mass testing. She's done repeated testing. I've taken tests three different times. So right now what people are saying is that they're being in the positive with their individuals that they think may have been positive, which is not accurate information. But you have to take the test in order for individuals to know. We just took a mass test. When the information comes back as far as who may be positive, who be, who's negative, they're separated instantly. It's no, they're in a pod and the person's positive and this person's negative. So that message and that information that they misconceive for the public, I apologize for that. I think Shirley has done an excellent job as far as what she's doing. She's doing basically pretty much all she can do at this time, basically. They're always on hands when they call for them. So uh, basically do their part to make sure that we're all right. One of the things that has been uh, exciting and I would say encouraging is that Sheriff Irvin has stayed abreast of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I just pray that everybody keeps on taking it serious and taking the precautions serious. From my perspective, Sheriff Irvin is doing an amazing job as far as kind of acting against the COVID-19 virus. You know, I hope that it does not spread any further into the jail, but I know they get people off the streets and you never know, you know, what they were into. So I just hope we all stay safe. I hope that soon they find a, some type of cure or vaccine that can help it to descend. And I just wanted this message to be conveyed to the public so we won't have a misunderstanding as far as the messages is being received from inside of these walls of the Richmond City Justice Center. All we want to do is make sure that we're doing the right thing for the right reason. We want to take care of your family member and we want you to be informed. Please, let's make sure that we're wearing our mask and that we're cleaning and we're doing all the things that we need to do according to the CDC guideline and the health department to make sure that we're safe, that we're being well. So thank you for all that you do to help us with your family members. And again, I'd like to thank all of my staff for all that you're doing to ensure that we're working during this hard and incredible time. These are times that we've never seen before and we are working very, very hard for you and your family members as workers here in the city of Richmond. So thank you very much. We appreciate you and have a great day.